Now, there's been some challenges because of the way we operated. Um, I told you the story yesterday about how um, the North Face equipment group that made backpacks sat right next to the, um, the Jansport equipment group, literally separated by a cubicle wall. It wasn't even a real wall, it was a cubicle wall. And it was literally the Korean, uh, Korean DMZ. I mean, they just did not talk to each other. And uh, the other thing is we oftentimes pitted our brands against each other, you know, was used the good old internal competition. And what that did was create really um, an insular thinking. And so our brands didn't even collaborate or work with each other. And again, apparel industry run by merchants, um, oftentimes they believe they know what consumers need three years from now, so why would they even reach out to consumers? Um, on top of that, because of a holding company mindset, um, very much about supply chain, about finance. Those was, was our so-called our rods, our strengths, our core competencies. And that created certain cultural challenges. But to be innovative, we knew we needed to take it over here. Okay? So um, I also shared this. Oh, what, what, one thing is we set out with a bold ambition. So this is the ambition. We, um, at the time when I started, we were about $7 billion. And we said, you know what? Over the next three to four years, we want to add a billion dollars to that $7 billion coming from organic growth, coming from our innovation programs. That was kind of a bold statement, being at $7 billion, OK? And we wanted to add 500 basis points to the gross margin. And aspirationally, we used to just participate in our industry. And then I think the more we looked at it, we realized with the number of brands, the amount of uh, outreach we had in terms of distribution and the geographies we were involved in, we, really, we realized that we actually had an opportunity to shape the industry that we were competing in and, and for the better. So we wanted to really shape the industry, okay? So that's our goals and aspirations. But again, if you go back to, I'm not gonna go back to the previous slide, but with that type of culture, it was something where a billion dollars and, and the idea of shaping, meaning that we'd actually have to work together, was going to be um, a challenge. So our initial solution, right? What happens when you hire a former Bain consultant and my boss was a former McKinsey consultant? So I'm just warning you if you're going to hire them. Okay, this is the great stuff you're going to get, and they're all going to look like this, right? So that was our solution. And we were two months away from doing this big innovation summit. And guess what? When we had these summits, that's what we did. We, we presented 120-page PowerPoints with you know, speakers that would talk about um, some of the, the slides in the PowerPoint, some of the themes, and you would sit in a room all day like this. And that was sort of uh, the way we were going to launch the whole innovation agenda. Thank God I work for a very gifted person, um, Stephen Duell. Um, he's my boss. He reports into the CEO, Eric. And he hired me in. And um, in fact, a little story. I, you guys, I, I shared my scorecard of failure. The reason I got hired is, I always say this, I was a minority candidate. And no, it's not because I'm Asian. And no, it's not. It's not. It has nothing to do with any of that. He hired me because there were no losers in the organization that failed as much as I had. And out of the candidate pool of 30 people, I was the biggest loser. And he said, that's what we wanted. <laughs> so think about it. Wow, you know, there are people much more qualified than me, much more successful, accomplished, all that. And he, uh, in fact, I think one of the board members said, you know, you really need to hire one of the, you need to hire somebody that's failed before. Because this is what the organization needs to do, is not, not only fail, but learn how to pick up after you fail, right? And so literally two months before we launched our innovation agenda, he reads this book. And everything changed after that moment, OK? So if you guys remember and recall the analogy that Dan talked about, right? OK? The writer is our analytical mental side, right? And we need to make sure the writer knows the directions that go from point A to point B. That's important. But the hard part is on top of this big emotional elephant um, who kind of wants to do whatever it wants to do, right? And it's not, I mean, the size of the brain and the elephant versus the, the, the hearth of the body, it's quite different. So, and then ultimately, you got to get the elephant moving from point A to point B on this path. All right? That's the analogy. All right? so, how do you direct the rider? How do you motivate the emotional elephant? And then how do you put the right guardrails and signposts and sort of cookie crumbs along the path to get behavior change? All right? So that's the, that, that was our uh, challenge. We read the book. There's nine chapters in the book. They're kind of bro broken out, three for the rider, three for the elephant, three for the path. 
And we used about five of them pretty, um, pretty, pretty liberally and pretty, uh, pretty frequently. And here are the five we used.